All right. A um, couple things to chat about here today that lead right into potential and kinetic energy. Um, so <clears throat> the weight of an object is simply something we can define as the amount of gravitational force being exerted on it. Now, this depends on an object's mass and also on the amount of gravitational acceleration. So the mass is the amount of matter, and then the gravitational acceleration is essentially how hard it's being pulled by the Earth, or I guess if it's on the Moon or on Mars or whatever it's sitting on, how hard that's pulling down on it. Um, and so when we deal with the weight, um, we're looking at its mass in kilograms, and g, this is that 9.81 meters per second squared that we looked at in class. All right, that then leads into, maybe, the work energy theorem. This is the idea that any work done on an object changes the energy of that object. Um, mathematically, like we already know that work is equal to the force exerted on it, on an object, multiplied by its displacement, um, assuming both of those that we're multiplying are in the same direction. Um, and so the work energy theorem extends that and says that this work that we've done on it is equal then to the change in energy of that object, which I think actually makes usually pretty good just kind of logical sense. Um, if I throw a ball, let's say straight up in the air, I do work on it to get it moving. As it moves upward, it gains potential energy. Um, I throw a ball towards someone. Um, I do work on it. It gains kinetic energy. Um, energy due to motion. Okay. All right. So work is done to push an object; it gains kinetic energy. Work is done to lift an object; it gains gravitational potential energy, which is energy due to its height. Um, there's a lot of different types of potential energy that we could look at. Um, this ener potential energy is simply the energy that an object has due to its potential of being able to do work. So chemical potential energy would be energy stored in chemical bonds. So something like an explosive has lots of chemical energy because stored in its bonds because if that energy is released, it will cause lots of things to go moving very quickly. Um, nuclear potential energy, even more. right? This is energy stored in the nucleus of atoms. Um, and if we split that nucleus, or if we fuse two of them together, we're going to release some of that energy. And it has potential of doing huge amounts of work. Um, we can look at gravitational potential energy, and in fact, this is what we're going to look at. This is energy possessed by an object because of how high it is above the ground, or whatever reference surface we're looking at. So gravitational potential energy... It really depends on three things. The mass of the object, you should write this stuff down, that's measured in kilograms. Um, the height, measured in meters. And the gravitational force, or the gravitational acceleration, and that is measured in one of two things, meters per second squared. Um, that's one of the typical ways. You'll sometimes, and this is more of a physics 20 thing, see this also in newtons per kilogram. Right, so one of those two. All right. So <clears throat> the formula EP equals MGH, and that P is for potential, so energy potential. Um, M is for mass. G is for that gravitational force. H is for the height. Again, kilograms, meter per second squared, and meters. And potential energy measured in joules. All right. So work is equal to force times distance. Um, so this is going to be the force is simply mg times the distance. 
The distance in this case is vertical, so work equals force times distance equals MGH. Think work energy theorem. All right. Now, let's take a look at a couple examples here. Okay, this is on the sheet that you have. All right, so to start with, we have a baseball with a mass of 0 0.145 kilograms is lifted 235 centimeters into the air on Earth. How much potential energy has it gained? Well, I've written down a little acronym here. I want you to use this, at least for these examples, um, and this is just a good way of keeping track of what you have, what you need, and then the equation you're going to use. So what do we have? Well, we have given, that's the G. The mass is 0 0.145 kilograms. This is actually the legitimate mass of a Major League Baseball, or it's in the range that would work for one. Um, our height. Now, I've given this to you as 235 centimeters. Uh, we need to change that to meters. So we're going to divide by 100, because there is 100 centimeters in each meter, so 2.35 centimeters. We also know, because we're on Earth, that G is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. Unknown, what do we need? That's our U. Well, this is going to, we need to find EP. Um, and now our job is really to find a formula that fits this. Now, I've just been giving you the formula, so that's pretty easy. EP equals M times G times H. My first S is substitution. Um, and this is where I just substitute the numbers into my formula. EP is equal to the mass. That's the 0 0.145 kilograms. times my 9.81 meters per second squared times my height of 2.35. You'll notice I made a mistake in my unit conversions. Not in the math, but just writing down that this is still centimeters. It was centimeters. I have changed it to meters. Um, and now, so equation, substitution, and my solution. EP equals 0 0.145 times 9.81 times 2.35. And my potential energy gained by this baseball is, and i got to look back, my calculator spits out lots of decimal places. I only need to have three significant digits, 3.34 joules. All right, that's my first example. All right, so work through that. Make sure you can get that answer on your calculator. Put a box around it when we are done. All right, let's move on to the next page, which has got the next question. A rock is thrown into the air and gains 356 joules of gravitational potential energy. If it has a mass of 2.50 kilograms, how high above the Earth's surface was it thrown? So in this case, um, we know EP. So enough work was done on it to give it this much energy. Now later on, we're going to talk about what kind of energy that would have had before this, and that's the energy of motion to get it up there. Um, its mass is 2.5 kilograms. We do know G, which is still 9.81, because we're on the Earth. All right, and then I've got my unknown. What don't I know? Well, how high? So what am I looking for? I'm looking for height. All right. Now, my equation that I start with is going to be the same as what I had before. EP 
P equals MGH. Except in this case, I need to solve for height. So mathematically, I want to get the H by itself, which means I need to divide both sides by M times G. This side by M times G. And I'm left with H, and I'm going to just rewrite this here, equals EP over MG. And so now my substitution, this is my next line down, H is equal to 356 joules divided by 2.50 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. And then my substitution. Um, be careful here with your calculator. You want to make sure if you're going to do all of this at once that you put brackets around all of this stuff. Otherwise your calculator is kind of stupid and it's going to come up with you'll go to 356 divided by 2.5 and then you'll take that answer and multiply by 9.81. So you got to make sure that you put brackets around all of that if you're doing it all at once in your calculator. So 356 and we're going to divide that by 2.5 and this is all in brackets multiplied by 9.81 and we will get the buttons right on the calculator. Um, a height of 14.51 meters. If we look carefully at this, this becomes three significant digits, so 14.5 meters. And we put a box around. Make sure you can get that on your calculator. Move on to the next one. Okay, you're going to notice that these start to look quite a lot the same. Um, you can try this on your own if you want. A brick is lifted up into the air on Earth. It gains 25.0 joules of potential energy and is lifted 1.5 meters up. What's its mass? Well, what are we given? Well, potential energy is going to be 25.0 joules. Um, height we're given is 1.50 meters. We know G, because we're on Earth, is 9.81. I keep specifying this. you got to know that the next question is going to make you calculate G for somewhere else. So, heads up there. Um, our unknown is its mass. All right, so we start again with our formula EP equals MGH. And we want to solve this this time for M. And so we have to divide both sides by the stuff M is multiplied by, which in this case is GH. So we're going to divide both sides by G times H. is a terrible H, but it'll work. GH on this side goes away, and I am left with M, I'm going to just rewrite it here, is equal to EP divided by GH. Now you'll notice this looks a lot like the last equation that we just made um, when we were solving for H. It's just the other stuff on the bottom of the equation. All right, so here we go. Our substitution then M is equal to 25.0 joules divided by 9.81 multiplied by 1.50 meters.
And same deal here, make sure you're careful with your calculator here. Um, if you don't want to enter it into your calculator um, all in one step and put big brackets around everything on the bottom, um, you could go 25 divided by 9.81 and take that answer and divide by 1.5. Mathematically, it'll accomplish the same thing. Um, or again, use the brackets, that's not a problem. 25 divided by, in brackets, 9.81 multiplied by 1.5. You will end up with your answer. Now your calculator spits out that this thing is 1.698946655 kilograms. Um, we need three significant digits. This is going to round to 1.70 kilograms. All right, moving on to our last potential energy question. 25 kilogram rock is lifted 2.5 meters above the surface of Mars. It gains 231.25 joules of potential energy. What is the acceleration due to gravity on Mars? So here we are given mass, which is 25 kilograms. have a height of 2.5 meters. Uh, we have a potential energy of 231.25. That's measured in joules. Our unknown this time is G. And so our equation. So we start with, again, EP equals MGH. Yeah. I divide that, both sides here, this time by M times H. Um, which leaves me with just G on this side. So rewriting this, G is equal to EP divided by MH. I now substitute in G equals 231.25, ooh, that's a lovely five, joules, all divided by mass is 25.0 kilograms. multiplied by the height of 2.50 meters. And same drill here. Make sure you're using brackets carefully if you're using it on your calculator. And we've got 231.25 divide by 25 times 2.5 in brackets. And my calculator spits out 3.7, but I've got three significant digits here, so it's going to be 3.70. My units are going to be meters per second squared. All right. Okay, so that's our last example to go with potential energy, which then quickly takes us back, if we can, to kinetic energy. This is energy due to motion. Um, depends on the object's speed, its velocity, um, or its mass, and its mass, sorry. And so our formula looks like EK equals one half mv squared. And let's take a look. A couple examples quick. Baseball is pitched at a speed of 99.50 miles per hour. 
144.48 meters per second. If its mass is 0 0.145 kilograms, how much kinetic energy does it have? What are we given? Well, we are given our speed, which is 44.48 meters per second. And we are given a mass of 0 0.145 kilograms. Our unknown is our kinetic energy. That's E K. Um, our equation given in the notes there. It'll also be on your formula sheet. E K equals one half M V squared. Uh, our substitution E K equals one half times our mass, which was 0 0.145 times our speed of 44.48 meters per second. And this is where we have to be careful. The squared only applies to the 44.48. Um, so that means if you're using a regular calculator, order of operations might suggest that you go 44.48 and do that, square that thing first and then multiply it by the rest. Okay, if you have a graphing calculator or something a little bit more powerful, it might be easier to do that later on, but this way you do know that you're only squaring the 44.48. So I do that, and I multiply by 0 0.145, and then I multiply that by 1 half or by 0 0.5, and I end up with a kinetic energy in this baseball of 143.5. 439104, but I look back at my question and I have three significant digits in my least number, so 143 joules of kinetic energy. All right, let's move on to the next and second last example in this lesson. Um, and this got messed up in my building the question. That's all right. Boulder has 125 joules of kinetic energy. If it is moving at 77.51 meters per second, what is its mass? So what are we given? We are given kinetic energy, which is 125 joules. We are given a speed of 7.51 meters per second. What's our unknown? We're all, our unknown here, which I'm just going to do up here, is um, our mass. So our unknown is our oops, mass, which equals something. We're going to come up with that. Our equation. Um, our equation, we're starting with this EK equals one half MV squared. Now we want to get the M by itself. So a couple things we have to do here. First of all, we have to get rid of the one half. We're going to get rid of that by multiplying both sides by two. Um, and then we're going to get rid of the v squared by dividing both sides by v squared. All right, so the 2's go away, the v squareds go away. I'm left with an m. So our m is equal to 2 times ek. divided by v squared. Okay, so my first s is the substitution. 
this case here, m equals 2 times 125 joules divided by 7.51 meters per second and that's the only part that's being squared here so be careful with that and our second one here for s is our substitution so mass is equal to and I start doing some of the math 2 times 125 divide that by 7.51 in brackets squared so that I'm only squaring the 7.51 and this turns out to be a rather small boulder of only 4.43 Two six one six two five, but it rounds to 4.43 kilograms. Make sure you can get that on your calculator. Finally, this takes us to our last one and probably the trickiest question of all um, because here um, we are looking at to find our, the speed. And it's mathematically a bit more tricky, but it's not that much more difficult. So our givens here Moving car has a mass of 1,255 kilograms. Um, we know the EK, which is a large number here, 484,957 joules. I suppose we could say this was 484.957 kilojoules as well. Um, and our unknown. Well, our unknown is going to be V. And our equation. Now, this is where we start having to think a little bit. Our equation is we start with the original one. EK equals 1 half MV squared. That's the part that or the equation that puts all of these variables together in one place but we now need to solve for v eventually that means we're going to have to take the square root of something but before we square root anything we need to make sure that we have the v squared by itself so we'll get that by itself so similarly to what we did last time we'll multiply both sides by two we will divide both sides by m That gets rid of the one half, gets rid of there, gets rid of the mass, gets rid of the mass. And now I'm sitting with v squared equals 2ek divided by the mass. And if I want to get rid of the squared, I'm going to have to take the square root of this side, which means I need to take the square root of everything. Oh, that's a terrible square root on this side. Um, and so my final formula looks like this. V equals square root of, and I'm going to write the square root over top of everything at the end, 2ek over m. All right, so my first substitution is just to plug the numbers into this. The numbers are not entirely pleasant, um, but if we look at our, our question, we know that our answer is going to have four significant digits. We'll do two times the EK, so two times that 484,000 number, um, and divide that by 1,255 kilograms. And then, and only then, do we take the square root of this. And so, um, on my calculator, I'm going to do 2 times this number here, divide by 1,255, and then take the square root. All right, so... I 
I end up with some number 772, and then I take the square root of that number, which gives me 27.79, which works out to, to 79999, lots of nines there, um, 27 point eight zero meters per second. That takes us to the end of today's lesson. Have fun!